Okay, so going on with this, it says that f double prime x equals 3, and we're going to go from f double prime all the way back to f of x, and if you notice here, they give us some values, one for the first derivative and then one for f. So when you have things that look like these, we're going to be able to find our c values. So if I do the integral of f double prime of x dx, that is going to be uh, the integral of 3, because that's what this is, dx, which is going to end up being uh, f prime. Well, let's, let's just do this. Let's say, so this is going to be f prime of x plus some c. Okay, so because the derivative of f is f prime, that means that the integral of f double prime will be f prime plus some c. Well, I am also doing the integral of 3 here, dx, which means this is going to be 3x, because this is x to the 0 power, so I add 1 plus c. So that means f prime of x is equal to 3x plus some c value. Well, if I come over here, I know that f prime of 2, f prime of 2 is equal to 5. f prime of 2 is equal to 5. Oops, I left the x off that, sorry. So what that f prime of, of 2 equaling 5 tells me is that this right here is f prime of x, that's f prime of x. That means when 5, I can plug 5 in for this f of x. So when f of x is 5, that's going to equal 3 times this x value that is 2, so I get to stick 2 in there, plus some c. So what that means is 5 plus 6 equals, sorry, 5 equals 6 plus c. You subtract the 6 over, so 6 is, or c is negative 1. So what that tells me is my f prime of x is equal to 3x minus 1. So that's the first part of the function. Now I want to do the integral of f prime of x dx, which is going to be the same as the integral of 3x minus 1 dx. So when you take the integral of f prime, that gives you f of x. When I do the integral of 3x, that gives me 3x squared over 2, and I get the integral of negative 1. It's going to be negative x to the first over 1 plus some c. Again, I go back over here, and they tell me that f of 2 is equal to 10. So I get to stick 10 in for this f of x. I get to take that 2 and stick it in there for that x that's being squared, so I take that 2 and square it, I'm sticking that in for that x, minus, I'm going to stick that 2 in for that x as well, plus c. Now I can find c by solving this thing. So this 2 reduces with one of these two, so I got 6 minus 2, that's 4, plus c, and you subtract 4 over, so c is 6, so this is my original function right here, except I had to find that c, so the answer to this, the original function of f of x is 3 halves x squared minus x plus 6. So that's working backwards to find your original function. That takes some practice, so you're going to need to practice doing some of those. The uh, trig functions, if you know your derivatives, then these are going to be a little bit easier. So I guess the question is, the derivative of what gives you cosine? Well, I hope you know the derivative of sine gives you cosine. So that means the integral of cosine would be sine. So whatever, and we've got to put plus c because we don't know what that is. It could be anything. So whatever you get over here, if you take the derivative of this, you should get back to that. Like if I take the derivative of this thing, that should get me back to this part right here, this 3x minus 1. If I take the derivative of 3x minus 1, that should get me back there to the beginning. So what is the derivative that gives you cosecant squared? Well, nothing gives you cosecant squared, but the derivative of cotangent is negative cosecant squared. So if I put a negative here, cotangent x, the derivative of negative cotangent is a negative negative cosecant squared, which makes that positive. 
So that would be that. So again, if you remember when we did derivatives, we got negative cosines, or neg when derivatives of C's gave you negative cosines. So you're gonna do negative, negative C's to get positive ones. Again, the derivative of cosecant is cosecant cotangent, and it's negative though, so we have to do a negative of cosecant, x plus c, to get this. So if you do the derivative of this, that gives you a positive one of these. What gives me, what derivative gives me sine? Well, nothing. The derivative of cosine gives me negative sine, so that means I've got to have a negative cosine of x. If you take the derivative of negative cosine, that's a negative negative sine, which works for that. Uh, what gives me secant? The derivative of tangent. So this would be tangent x plus c. And the derivative of what gives me secant tangent? That's the derivative of secant. So this would be secant x plus c. So again, you got to get this stuff memorized because that makes it much faster and easier. If you don't have it memorized, you're going to be hurting. Then we're going to get into... Did I skip some problems? I think there might be some problems down here. I may have cut them off. Let me see if I can find them. I thought we'd have a couple problems. Tell you what, I'm going to make up a problem or two here because I want you to have some practice here. So let's say we got the integral of 2 sine x dx. So again, the two comes out here. You do not have to move it out there, but we want to think about we only want the derivative or the integral. I think I said derivative. Integral of two sine dx. So the integral of sine is negative cosine x plus some c, and then we take that negative times two, and we get this. Now, this is one c up here because it's really like this, and then when you distribute the negative two, this is just new new. C. So like this was C1, so if this was 1, you take 2 times 1, you get 2 here, but we don't really care because C just means any constant. So we don't really even mess with that part usually. We just keep it a C. Some books say that's C1 and this is C2 because they're not the same, but we don't have to worry about that. We're just going to put a C because it's some constant, and that's be the answer to that one. If I did the integral of... Uh, and it's the integral or antiderivative. Let's say I have the antiderivative, and let's, let's go to some things where we have to know some, some of our identities. I'm going to make this one up. So this one is not any identity we know, but if we took that denominator and we split it up into two parts, we could rewrite this thing as sine over cosine as tangent, and 1 over cosine as secant x dx and you don't really have to flip them back around but most of the time you guys memorize them in the order we give them to you so it was secant x tangent x when we give, gave this to you and the integral of secant x tangent x is secant x plus some c so this would be the integral of that mess up there so sometimes you got to go back and do some old uh, old integration problems in order to find these okay we got another couple problems to do here. We got the antiderivative of e to the x. Well, do you remember what the derivative of e to the x is? The derivative of e to the x is e to the x, so this is the integral is the same thing. So don't forget e to the x. It's always e to the x, but you got to put a plus c when you do integral. And then if we did a uh, derivative of this thing over here, we get a to the x. So this again is going to be one that you're going to kind of have to memorize when we do this. So over here, if you want, you can move that 5 out there, but you don't have to because the integral of e to the x is e to the x, and you just put a plus c on there, and we're done with that. This one is a little harder. You kind of got to memorize this, so we have to take and say that this is going to equal 1 over the natural log of the base, and then it's going to be the same thing to the power plus some c. Now, some books write the 6x straight up in the top over natural log of 6. The thing is, this part right here is just the numerical value. Like, that's a coefficient because it's a number. So I would rather you write it like this because this is where the variable stuff changes. But if you write it like that, that's this is okay too. But again, this is just a number. The natural log of 6 is a number. So you may, you may want to just 
you know, keep doing that same thing. And then, if you remember, if we did the uh, derivative, um, if we took the derivative of natural log of x dx, that was 1 over x. So if you do the integral of 1 over x, that equals the natural log of the absolute value of x plus c. So again, this 5, you can take it out front or not. You may want to, to make it look just like the problem. So that's a coefficient of 5. And you could rewrite it like this, which is going to give me 5 times the natural log of the absolute value of x plus c. The reason we use absolute value here is because whenever you take a natural log of any x, it has to be a positive because you can't take the natural log of a negative. Okay. So, let's see. We're going to go on down here and see what this bottom part says. Fundamental theorem of calculus. Now, this is what we just did the other day. It's where you do uh, the, in, the integral of little f is capital F, and remember the number on the letter on top goes in the b, and then it's minus the a on the bottom. And we always want the smallest one on the bottom and the top one on the top. So let's do, see what we got here, and see if we can do some more examples of these problems. So we're going to integrate. Okay, now this is, these are called definite integrals. If you notice, every problem we did before that, you did not have any numbers on top and bottom. Those are called indefinite integrals, and you always got to put a plus C on these, on those. On these, you get to plug in the numbers. So this is your A, this is your B, and this is 10. So the integral of 10 is 10X. But when you do this, when you put your 10X down, I usually do a bracket, you can do a straight line, but you take those integrals and you put them over here as a negative two and four. And then just like this is the B, so we put in the four for the B. Minus, and we put in the negative two for the A. Okay, so this is going to end up being 40 plus 20, which would make this whole thing 60. These are definite integrals because you get a definite number. It's no plus C. Doing the same thing on this one, we need to take that x to the one half power. We're going to leave this zero to one of x squared, but we're going to take that and change that to the half power. And now we're going to do the integral just like we did before. And we're going to add one to the two, put the three underneath. I'm going to put a bracket here plus I'm going to add one to the two. So two halves plus one half is x to the three halves. And you're going to flip your three halves over, stick it in front, and then you move your zero to one out here. So we're going to stick a one in here. And we're going to stick a 1 in here. Okay. Then we're going to have minus, and we're going to stick a 0 in here. Right, you've got to put this in parentheses because it's minus the whole thing. And we're going to stick a 0 in here. And then this is going to be 1 third plus 2 thirds minus this whole thing gives you 0. So this will be 3 thirds or 1 is what you get out of that thing. So you want to practice these things. Okay, let's do this one. The derivative of y gives me secant squared. I hope you all know that that is going to be tangent. I'm going to show you another thing you could do. You can put that 2 out front and just do this like this. We're going to go negative pi force to pi force. So what that means is we're going to have two out front. We're going to distribute that in later. That's going to be the tangent of the top number, pi, tangent of pi force, minus the tangent of negative pi force. Okay, so I'm going to talk about unit circle here. Pi force right here is radical 2 over 2. And radical 2 over 2. Down here it's positive radical 2 over 2 and negative radical 2 over 2. That's negative pi force. So y over x or anything over itself, this is this part is 1 minus you put a negative divided by itself. This part is negative 1. This is going to be 2 times 2, which is 4. Okay, so we're doing, these are very similar to the ones we did a little while ago with plus c's, except now they're definite integrals. So, again, you want to split this up under each part. So, this is going to be 1 over t to the half minus t to the half over t to the half. You're going to split them up. 
It's still integral from 4 to 9. Now you want to change this up to the top, and we're going to have 4 to 9, and that's going to be t to the negative 1 half, and then anything divided by itself is 1, and I left off the dt up here, you should write it every time. So we're going to add 1 to negative a half, so that's going to be t to the 3 halves, over 3 halves, but it's faster to flip it upside down, and then minus the integral of 1 is t, and then we're going to plug in the 4, and it goes in the bottom, the 9, the 9 goes first. So this is going to be 2 thirds times 9 to the 3 halves minus 9, and then minus, and this is going to be a parenthesis because we've got to subtract when we put the 4 in, 2 thirds times 4 to the 3 halves minus 4. Now, when you have a rational exponent, do the square root first. The two in the denominator is square root. So this thing right here is still two-thirds in front. And that two is the square root of nine, which is three. And you take three cubed and you get 27 for this. We get minus nine there. Okay, and then over here, I'm gonna leave this minus here and simplify what's in here first. So the square root of four is two. 2 cubed is 8, so 8 times 2, that would be 16 thirds minus 4, which I'd change that to 12 thirds to get common denominator. So over here, I would probably reduce this 3 with that 27, so that's 9. So this is 18. 18 minus 9 gives me 9 minus, and then 16 thirds minus 12 thirds is 4 thirds. So I would change this again to 27 thirds. 27 minus 4 is 23 thirds, and then you can just leave your answer like that. Okay, let's see what we got coming up next. Oh, we're done. Nope, there's one more. It's just not turning for me. There we go. All right, I'm going to quit there, and I'm going to do one more video on this after school.